first thing with the ABG is, make sure that it's the same patient that you're doing it, okay? So label that. After that, the first thing is, document how much oxygen they're on when you're doing an ABG. Because the oxygen values might be okay, but that okay-ish value comes from giving extra oxygen, right? So always document what is the percentage of oxygen they're on. If they're on venturi mask, if they're on high flow 50 liters, document that. Okay, and then let's come to the ABG interpretation. Again, there are lots and lots of ways of ABG interpretation, but let me tell you the simple techniques, okay? So first is pH. What's the normal value? Um, amazing. If it is less, what is that? If it is more, what is that? Good. Next, you come for PCO2. What's the value? Sorry, come again. Yeah, okay, so it's approximately 4.5 or 4.7 sometimes some machines might say to up to 6.1 okay again your machine will say some of the it depends on the calibration but this is a normal range okay 4.5 to 6 okay if it is less what does that mean respiratory what okay, if it is more it is respiratory okay. now coming to the oxygen what's the value sorry yeah, PO2, what is the value? Yeah, uh, they'll say more than 11. Okay. So again, it might be 11, but that is because you're giving oxygen. That's why I'm saying if you compare this, let's say you put it as 40%, then you can't say this is normal. This is abnormal because you're giving 40% oxygen to maintain the saturation. Right. Okay. Next, what's your bicarb value? 22 to 28, they say. Okay. If it is less, what happens? So metabolic acidosis. If it's more, what is it? Okay. Next is base excess. They say minus 2 to plus 2. Okay. This is exclusively for metabolic alone. Okay. If it is less than this, it's metabolic acidosis. If it is more than this, then it's metabolic alkalosis. Okay. This might come into effect if there is a mixed picture. The patient might have respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis. In that case, which is predominant to differentiate that you use the base excess. Happy? There are other things that you can look here, okay? For example, the patient has come in with carbon monoxide poisoning. You will have carboxy, uh, carboxy hemoglobin on the blood which you can look for. It might be raised in smokers, but it will be considerably raised in a carbon monoxide poisoning, so you look for that, okay? Sometimes if you have methemoglobinemia, again, you will have methemoglobin mentioned in the ABGs or a VBG, which will again indicate the patient has got like different types of poisonings. You might have this, like methyl, uh, nitrates and stuff, uh, amyl nitrate, and they might cause methemoglobinemia, okay? Sometimes your local... Uh, anesthetic toxicity can also cause methemoglobinemia, so that will help you. You can also have sodium, which is your level range of 135 to 150, they say, okay? And then you have potassium, which is your 3.5 to 5, uh, and then you have chloride, you have calcium. So this is ionized calcium, which will mostly be about 1.15. This is not your normal calcium, it's ionized calcium. If you double it, so it will be around 2.2, 2.2 in your normal calcium, or corrected calcium, this is your ionized calcium. Okay, and then the most important is you have glucose and then you also have lactates. Okay, this is a rough thing about ABG. So when you're interpreting it, think about it. So in this patient, you're doing an ABG to think, oh, I'm looking for type 2 respiratory failure. Look for that first and then also make sure that you read through the entire ABGs fully and then you sign saying that, okay, I've reviewed it. This is what it is. Any questions? Happy?